All right, so this last section of chapter four is basically formalizing uh, relations and functions. So we're gonna put this little baby to bed here. And what we gotta talk about is uh, this little, remember functions is a machine. So an equation uh, is basically like the rule, okay? So the equation is basically like the rule that you have to come up with. The uh, their domain is input. Range is output. Dependent variable is the dependent variable is the output. Independent variable is the input. Right. So uh, just make be mindful of that. That this x is input. X is the independent variable. Right. X is the domain. Okay. The equation is the rule. Okay, it can also be the graph. Okay, this is your output. This is your range. This is your dependent variable. We talked about this um, not too long ago. Okay, but just in case you forgot. So let's take a look at this. Identifying domain and range of each relation. Remember we talked about all relations is everything. So represent the relation with the mapping diagram is the relation of function. So first off, look at all your x's. Do your x's repeat? here. No, they do not repeat. So this is a function. And when you talk about a mapping, you can go input and in your input put negative 2, put 0, put 4, put 5. And output put 0 0.5, 2.5, 6.5, right? And uh, there's a 2.5, but just draw arrows to it. So negative 2 goes to 0 0.5, 0 goes to 2.5, 4 goes to 6.5, 5 goes to 2.5. So there's your mapping, okay? B, take a look. Here's a 6, here's a 6. This is not a function. This is not a function. However, you can still do a, a mapping uh, diagram. So here's the input. Input is 6, 4, and 5. And output is going to be 5, 3, 4, and 8. So 6, I go to 5, but 6, I also go to 4. 4, I go to 3, and 5, I go to 8. So since 6 goes to two locations, that makes it not a function. Okay, pretty easy. You got it, got it. Why don't you do it? I'll see you back here in a minute. All right, talking about vertical line test. All right, these are both relations, but are they functions? We can use the vertical line test here. So here we can make a coordinate plane, and we, we know it's a function. Well, we know it's not a function, but let's go ahead and graph. Negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, up 2, 1, 2, and I put a dot. Then I go to negative 3, and then I go up 1, and I put another dot. 0, negative 2, put a dot. All right, then negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, down to 1, I put a dot. And then one, and then up to two, one, two. This guy right here is the vertical line, so this is not a function. This one is not a function using the vertical line test. Now, y equals negative x squared plus three. I'm going to have to make an x and a y t chart here. So I'm going to go negative two, negative one, zero, one, two. Negative two, so if I plug that in, negative two squared plus three. That's 4. Negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. If I plug negative and then I do negative 1 in there, plus 3. Negative 1 plus 3 is negative 2. Plug in 0. Negative 0 squared plus 3. Um, I'm sorry. Take that back. Uh, negative 2 squared is 4. Negative, that's negative 1. This one, negative 1 squared, and that's going to be a positive 2. And so then this is a positive 3. If I plug in 1, negative 1 squared plus 3, that's going to give you 2. And I plug in negative 2 squared plus 3, that's negative 4. That gives me a negative 1. So looking at this, do my x's repeat? No. But if I graph it, if I graph this, uh, negative 2, 1, 2, down 1. Negative 1, up 2, 1, 2. 0, 3. And then 1, 2, and then 2, negative 1. So it makes a 
U-shaped curve makes a parabola. So it is, in fact, a function because it passes the vertical line test. You got to got it. Why don't you pause the video and do the got it, and we will um, kick back here with problem number three. All right. The function w of x equals 250 represents the number of words you can type or read in x minutes. How many words can you read in 8 minutes? This is just literally w of 8 equals 250 times 8. So what is 250 times 8? What is 250 times 8? That's 2,000. So w of 8 is 2,000. Okay, pause the video, do the guide, I'll see you back here in a minute. All right, this guy, we did this just in class uh, the other day. F of x is equal to negative 1.5x plus 4. What's, uh, what's f of 1? So I go ahead and do negative 1.5 times 1 plus 4. So uh, negative 1.5 away from 4. Um, let's see, what is 4 take away negative 1.5. What is 4 take away negative 1.5? That's 2.5. So f of 1 is 2.5. Find f of 2. Find f of 2. f of 2, I'm going to plug that in, is negative 1.5 times 2 plus 4. That is negative 3 plus 4, so that gives me a 1. That's a 1. And then, so I find the, which one has 2.5 in it. Well, that's easy. 2.5 and 1 is here. That's A. But you can continue to go ahead and do F of 3, negative 1.5 times 3 plus 4. I think negative 1.5 times 3 plus 4 gives me negative 0 0.5. And then finding F of 4 is negative 1.5 times 4 plus 4 and I believe that's going to get me a negative 2. Okay, easy enough. You have a got it. Why don't you pause the video and uh, do it and I'll see you back here in a minute. All right, talking about reasonable domain and range for this one. Uh, you have three quarts of paint to paint the trim in your house. A quart of paint covers a th 100 square feet. The function a of q equals 100q represents the area in square feet that quarts of paint cover. What domain and range are reasonable for the function? What is the graph of this function? Okay, now, when they're talking about domain and range, they're talking about um, what can I plug into this thing. So first off, can I plug, if, if domain is the input, so that represents the number of quarts of paint that I can have. So, if you think about it, the smallest value for my domain is going to be zero, right? I can't have negative quarts of paint. And what's the maximum quarts of paint? Well, if I have, um, you have three quarts of paint, that's my maximum, <laughs> right? That's easy. So, boom, there you go. So, less than or equal to Q is less than or equal to three. There's my domain. Okay, that's my domain. That was real easy to do, right? Now, let's, can we buy a half a quart? Can we buy two and a half quarts? No. So really, if we have to uh, graph this, we can go ahead and say, all right, this is Q and this is A of Q. And we're going to go zero quarts, one quart, two quart, three quart to get our chart. Now, using the rule A of 0 equals 100 times 0, so that's 0. If I put 1 in there, that's 100 times 1, so that's 100 square feet. If I put 2 in there, that's 200, so that's 200 square feet. And if I put 3 in there, that's 300 square feet. So um, my range then can be, my range will be anything from 0 to a of Q to 300 square feet. What does my graph look like? Well, I'm going to go 0, 0. I'm going to go 1, and let's call this 100. We'll go 2, 200, 
three, 300, and I'm just going to stop it right there. You can't keep going and extend it forever because that's as far as it can go. Okay, so um, I know this went a little long, but it kind of brings everything together. Hopefully that makes sense to you. I look forward to seeing you in class, and may the forest be with you.